How many times does 5 go into 2? Well, 5 doesn't go into 2 because 5 is bigger than 2. We place a decimal point after the 2 and don't forget to add a 0 right after it. Now if we ignore the decimal for a second, 2.0 becomes 20. Let's ask again. How many times does 5 go into 20? That's easy 4 times. Because 5 times 4 equals 20 perfect. So, we write 4 in the quotient right after the decimal point. Now subtract. 20 minus 20 equals 0. No remainder, we're done. So the final answer is 2 fifths as a decimal is 0 0.4. Not too hard, right? Let's try another. As always, how many times does 8 go into 1? Well, 8 doesn't go into 1 because 8 is bigger than 1. So what do we do now? We bring in our secret weapon, the decimal point. We place a decimal point right after the 1 inside the division bar, making it 1 point. Then, we add a 0 right after the decimal point, and voila! Now it looks like 10. Also, place a decimal point in the quotient, the answer area, right above the decimal point in the dividend. Just to make sure you don't forget at the end, did you get that? So now, instead of asking how many times 8 goes into 1, we ask, how many times does 8 go into 10? The answer is 1 time. We write 1 inch the quotient right after the decimal point. Next multiply. 8 times 1 equals 8. Now subtract. 10 minus 8 equals 2. We still have a remainder of 2 not done yet. To continue, we bring down another zero. This zero comes from the dividend. We bring down this zero next to the two, making the new number 20. Now ask again, how many times does eight go into 20? The answer is two times. Write two inch, the quotient. Multiply, eight times two equals 16. Subtract, 20 minus 16 equals four. Still a remainder of four, keep going. Bring down another zero. From the dividend, place it next to the 4, making 40. Ask, how many times does 8 go into 40? That's 5 times. Write 5 inch the quotient. Multiply, 8 times 5 equals 40. Subtract, 40 minus 40 equals 0.